Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal aqibat al-muttaqeen. Wal a'udwan illa ala zalimeen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd. Ayu al ahbab. Continuing on in our series uh, of some of the, the benefits from Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala in his discussion about important characteristics that we possess and how they can be within the bounds of the Sharia, the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's limits. Ayyul Ahbab, Shaykh al-Islam mentioned the fourth characteristic that we're discussing here, which is a shahwa the lowly desires, your desires. And Ayyul Ahbab, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, a shahwa has its limitation, which is a peace of mind and heart ease from the drudgery and, assidu and assiduity of performing acts of obedience to Allah and acquiring good deeds by performing the extra acts of worship. Utility of this peace of mind and heart ease will assist you in performing these acts of worship. But when this particular quality exceeds its boundary, it becomes a burning desire and lust and will enter its companion into the realm of being almost animalistic in nature. And when it falls short of its limit and fails to be used as leisure time to seek self-perfection and the bounty of Allah, then it becomes a weakness. Ayul Ahbab probably the most important faida for us here in dealing with shahwa because mostly when we read the text and we hear the discussion of shahwa it's usually usually in a negative context meaning exceeding the boundaries the second case that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned it's a person who exceeds the limit by following their desires their lowly desires and as he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, that it becomes, the person becomes so lustful to where they become animalistic in nature. Ayul Ahbab, we can think of many case, cases where this is uh, the situation. When, in, for example, this is not just indicative or related strictly to our society, but in many societies around the world, due to the various things which cause an individual to, to chase their desires, that you can see how it lessens the wholeness of an individual. For example, when a person becomes addicted to pornography or to watching the Muharram, those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, as we know the Prophet sallallahu explained to us where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, that verily they have a, a ran on their heart for what they used to do. They, 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 you know, they have a black spot, a covering on their heart. The Prophet ﷺ described that as that covering being like a black dot. Every time that you do a sin, that this that a black dot taints your heart. And the more, sin, the more you sin, the more dots cover your heart until the heart is, is covered and becomes sick. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that the Prophet, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that in the body is a morsel of flesh that if it becomes sick, then the whole body becomes sick. If it becomes and if it's healthy, the whole body becomes healthy. Verily, it's the heart. So ayul ahbab, when the heart becomes tainted with uh, these types of distraction and this sinfulness, not only is it weakening your iman, and as we mentioned before, that the the sinfulness is a means to disbelief. So it's weakening your, your faith and taking you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's sickening your heart. 
So much so that healthy interactions, because we live in a society where we're mixed. Maybe your boss, you're a man and your boss is, is a woman. Or you, you have to interact with the opposite sex all the time. So you can't even look at that individual as a human individual. Instead, you only see them in a sexual matter. Akramakumullah. And this is real, ayyul ahbab. And it happens to many people that they become so sick that they, they can't see it, anyone that they look at who's from the opposite sex. So much so, some people become so sick that it, 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 it goes to the level of incest. And, it, and especially if they mix it with drugs and alcohol, that they can lose their intellect. So much so to where they would even not have shame if they had relations with their own sister or brother. That's a sickness, Ayyul Ahbab. And that's what Ibn Al-Qayyum, when he was referring to that the shahwa, when it's not within the bounds of the sharia, that the person begins to become animalistic in nature. And as Allah mentions in the Quran, bel, avel, you know, that the people, when they become worshipping their desires, that they become worse than the animals. This is very real. Allah said it. The Prophet also emphasized these, these aspects and that we should use our shahwa in the, uh, in the marital bonds, in the marital, uh, bound, uh, within the bounds of the marital bond. That when a person has those, uh, the sexual desires, in Islam we only have the choice of doing it through marriage. And so all of those things, when a person becomes sick and they're tainted by following their desires, they become like the animals. Look at the people who you see who are uh, very affected by drugs in a very bad way. Not only their physical appearance, but for example, most of the people who are, uh, the, the women who are affected by prostitution in the in the Western countries, especially, that they they have usually either they have mental issues, or uh, the drugs, the drugs take them towards that. Perhaps they would never have went to that lowly lifestyle, and there's no way you can make that uh, an honorable lifestyle, even though the society tries to change the perception, try to say that it's okay to commit adultery and fornication, that these become regular practices, and so forth. But ayul ahbab, in Islam, never would we accept that. Never can we accept those practices. And it shows whenever a woman has to give up her most precious gift of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her to protect, and in fact it's a precious gift even for a man, to protect his private parts, and only share it in the marital bonds, that this ayul ahbab is a lowly state. It's a lowly status. Because most of the people, at least in the beginning of the affairs, they, they, don't, they would not have wanted this. They would not have wanted to do that. But they felt out of necessity because they have a need. Drugs are on their back. They have drugs. The, the, the wickedness and the ferocity of those drugs, which is a part of their shahwa, is a part of their lowly desires, causes them to where they have to sell a piece of themselves. Ayul Ahbab. This is the danger of following the, the lowly desires and not keeping them within the bounds of the Sharia. And the example of using it in a good way, we've already mentioned, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that the person will be rewarded if they have relations with their spouse. And, uh, and this means in the marital bound. Ayul Ahbab, we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from every innovation and every kind of evil and from following our wicked desires. And may Allah forgive us for all of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.